Hey guys, what's going on? So I wanted to make a video on basically on the trading strategy that I'm using um, and then the rules that I've kind of developed around it um, and then essentially just kind of go through it. So this isn't my trading plan. This is just the strategy that kind of goes hand in hand with the plan, but it kind of just breaks it down. So, um, so the contents within here is the strategy, the fundamentals, the ASR, the rules, the trade management, the money management side of things. Um, the patterns and then obviously so forth so starting with strategy um so the strategy is a patient strategy so understanding that trading the way i trade requires a huge amount of patience if you're going to trade this way you have to understand that you can't just be jumping in and out of trades constantly it's just a strategy that requires a large amount of patience and discipline in order for you to actually be successful using it it requires a small amount of trades in high value areas so i don't need to take trades every day so I can set alerts to have more um, than enough time to prepare ahead and take advantage of these. I do still spend um, quite a lot of hours, maybe more than um, most other people who trade different strategies, um, preparing myself for the markets. However, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's just the routines that I have in place in order for me to uh, be profitable. In terms of fundamentals, I don't trade fundamentals. I don't care about what's happening. I just, I'm just aware that it's going to bring volatility to the market. So what events like holidays, data releases, political uncertainty, um, what could cause me to stay out of the market or um, tighten up my stop loss to avoid um, experiencing any sort of level of slippage um, or high spreads. So low liquidity, big elections, geopolitical events, and basically anything that can be priced in. So essentially, when I'm taking trades, I'm making sure I've mapped out my week ahead of time so that I'm aware of these things, um, so that I'm not going to be in trouble. Or if the trade is shaping up and I know that there's volatility coming into the market, could that volatility work in my favor? So that's the only thing that I'm looking at. But once again, personally, I don't care about it because it goes back to what I was told by one of my mentors was that if you're trading on a, um, let's say, back testing, you're back testing, right? And you're going through all of your trades. Are you looking at the news at that point? Absolutely not. And are your trades still playing out? Yes. So, you know, does it really matter? Not really. So it's good to be aware of them. It's just you don't need to trade them the way I, that I trade. Um, often will I reevaluate my trading plan. So at the end of each month, I'll compare my trades, my missed trades, my management with my trading plan. And then essentially, I will then kind of see if I've, you know, followed my plan fully or if there's any sort of adjustments or tweaks that i would be willing to make for example i might want to take out a particular type of entry because it may not suit my personality at the person the person i am right now however in the future when i have more capital or when i've scaled up i may be inclined to want to re-add that sort of particular entry when i've gained more experience and so forth so there's loads of different ways to take trades and i can see trades every single day it doesn't mean that i'll take all of them how do I track my trades? Well, I journal all of my trades um, with Notion, and then within there, um, I document them with snapshots, collecting date as much as possible. So I might have a few other videos on uh, my YouTube, but if not, I'll probably post a new one in the near future. Often do I forecast? Um, I do forecast every weekend with the week ahead, um, so my Sunday market breakdown, and then basically they're all stored in here. And then I have my daily forecast. So if I have something on watch and that I'm really eyeing it up um, in the morning, first thing I'll do is I'll put that on there as well, put in my thoughts. And then at least when I take the trade, I have somewhere to say, okay, well, I did forecast this trade and it was in my plan. So it was definitely a valid trade, win or loss. It doesn't matter because it met all the criteria. Um, and then I've got my weekly, monthly ASR. So have I documented... Um, and filled in my weekly ASR, monthly ASR. Sometimes I do get a little bit sloppy and I don't always do this. And I think that's something that you should know is very important. Like you should try your best to do these things, but if you don't do it, don't beat yourself up, just keep progressing. And then next time round, or if you have time, go back and do it. Because these are the things that give you that incremental growth that will help you um, learn from your previous mistakes and you'll improve faster than uh, most. So, basically talking about the rules around my trading. So the criteria, first criteria is risk reward. 
So I'll take a one to three risk reward. Um, sometimes I might take less, but then I'm looking at the bigger picture. So it is much, much greater regardless. Um, a 10 pip minimum stop loss um, only on an advanced refined entry using the five minute chart. 15, min, uh, 15 pip stop loss for any 15 minute to one hour entry. Um, and then um, I tra the trade has to be within my plan, of course. So I weigh up the pros and the cons of the confluences. And then if they're more unfavorable for the pros, then I will definitely go to opt into it. If, obviously, if it's, if it's more favorable for the cons, I'm not going to take the trade. Um, so I have to make sure that, you know, I've weighed up the pros and cons and what's my negative confluences and my positive confluences. And then I can basically see, am I going to be taking this trade or not? The next one is um, position must be supported by higher time frame confluence or structure so that I'm not just trading into any zone. Um, I know where I'm looking at. I'm looking at market direction. So I'm forcing myself to go do my top down analysis to make sure that if I'm positioning myself in the market, I know where I'm positioning myself and I'm aware of any sort of larger pullbacks or structures forming so that I'm aggressive or semi aggressive with my management at that point or very relaxed, of course. Um, check if there's any other positions to be more patient for that's on watch. So before I jump into a trade, I might see, let's say, a few other trades on my watch list. I'm not just going to jump into the first one that I see because I have done that in the past. I will then evaluate, OK, I'm waiting for these two positions as well. Which one is shaping up? Um, and which one is shaping up in the nicest way possible. So it has more confluences in a sense. And that also, I would also look at risk reward as well, because, you know, that also plays a factor. But most of all, it's more about structure, positioning and protection. Those are the main key factors that I'll look at when I'm taking a position. If they all tick the box and that's worth taking, I'll take it. If it doesn't, sometimes it's worth just missing it out because the risk is much greater than just taking a profit. Um, so yeah, trend um, continuation on high time frame, looking at reversal zones and so forth, um, being aware of swaps. So making sure that I'm aware of time, that's very important. Um, this is something that I don't really have a problem with now, but previously I did have this issue. So it's one of the reasons why I've kept it on there just so that I don't go back and repeat any issue, but high spread hours. So being aware that if I'm taking a position and we're coming into a high spread hour, maybe in the next hour or the hour after, Am I going to be closing that position very soon? Is it going to be a very short term trade? Or if I'm going to be adding the in the position, am I going to add some additional um, extra room so that I'm not screwing my risk reward, but at the same time, I'm protecting myself, which is the most important part from anything that could potentially happen and then slippage as well. So being aware that slippage can occur, something that's very, very important. And I think it can easily go missed, um, especially during high impact news. Next one is, what are my criteria for existing and winning trades? Um, the price has reached my take profit zone, essentially. So I will have particular zones that, you know, that I'll mark on the charts. And if the price reaches there, then I can either be, then I can either take a manual trade, a manual close on my trade, or I can be very aggressive my management. But, you know, these take profit zones are, they are proper, like, you know, I've waited a long time for them, so it would require a lot of patience to be getting there. But sometimes being more aggressive with your management is better than just closing a trade. But sometimes something can change in the market and the market can develop. And if you haven't caught up with that, then it can affect you. Next one is um, reversal structure. So you might get into a structure that might just change into something else and evolve. So being aware that if that happens, Am I ready to exit the trade at any time? Absolutely. Just have to be extra careful with these ones because you don't want to accidentally um, exit a good trade. So these are ones that I think comes with experience as well. And know that if you're in a high value area, for example, at the top of a structure on the one, two, three, for example, and at the very end pattern within a pattern, something else happens. And let's say you're, you're in an expanding with an expanding at the top. Um, sometimes rather than a reversal, it can act as a continuation. So these sort of situations, you want to be extra on your A game. So this is just a gentle reminder for myself that, you know, certain patterns in certain areas don't have to always work out the way that we see it. But majority of the time, it probably will, but it's possible that it won't. 
price has become very corrective near my entry. So sometimes I might enter the position looking for price to, um, you know, move quite aggressively, but then if it corrects for a certain amount of time and then it becomes equal to previous price, then I may just opt out to just close my entry and reevaluate for a future entry as it might just make its way um, back to where previous price was before it drops or goes up. So there's certain situations that I think only applicable to my personal experience. I wouldn't expect you to understand everything here, but these are just certain um, points that, you know, jump out to me because they reflect on a certain time or an experience that I had that can kind of just help me not have that experience again. Um, and they come from ASRing and journaling your trades so that you can learn from these and then jot them down into something like this. So when you come back and read this, you'll understand it. What is my criteria for a losing trade? So if price developed into something more complex, then, you know, I might take a losing trade. Um, price has corrected and it's moved into high spread hours at that point there. I might just be inclined to not be in the market anymore. Um, High time frame pullback consumes more than 50% of trading price. So yeah, if I got into a trade and it dropped off aggressively and then pulled back 50%, at that point now I'd probably get out of the market and take 50% of my profits. Near miss pulled price. Pull, obviously this is not every single time, but majority of the time I've learned from experience that it's, it's healthier for my portfolio to do that. Um, near miss price pulled back, creating continuation. So yeah, um, sometimes you might get into a great trade and you are, let's say, expecting price to drop and price drops, but then it pulls back up. And because you're expecting price to keep going down, your mind is now focused on the sell, when in fact the price has actually given you another message and it's coming back up. And what you've done is you've either taken a break even or a small loss. So that's the that's one of the things that always used to catch me. Um, and I think these two combined actually helped me overcome that. So um, that's something that for myself was was very useful um, and then did not follow my plan so if I took a trade and it wasn't really my plan and I was in a profit or a loss I can manually close it because I know that I shouldn't have taken that trade um, and it's not really good for my portfolio growth even if it was a win or loss so it has to be just completely um, you know just realize that don't do those sort of things because that's not, that's not running a business that's just basically gambling um, so trade management is the next point and then money management. So trade management is just basically how I manage my trade. So stop loss will be trailed manually by following structure in the nature, which I have a picture at the bottom, which I'll show you at the end. Um, and what criteria would cause me to exit my trade early? So uh, an evolving structure with confirmation, high time frame reversal, near miss rejection, followed by continuation, high impact news resulting in slippage. Those are the ones that would cause me to um, basically exit a trade early. Um, for example, yeah, it, it could be inflation rates or whatever, you know, I might just be like, okay, you know, I'm not going to sit through that and give back X amount of profit. I might be aggressive with my management or just close the trade manually and re-enter after the news is hit or whatever. So the next one is money management. So I've set in here too, I think over time and experience, I have increased this, but I think three is now kind of where I'm at. And I think three trades is my capability of management at this point in time. So I'm more than happy to keep this at three, but I wouldn't take any more than three trades. Two is, two was for some time for, for the past two years, it was kind of just enough. But now I think with experience and portfolio growth, I can add in another position. Um, it, it just means that obviously um, less risk, you know, and I, I don't take a full 1% risk. So in terms of that, it, that would still be less than 1% most of the time if I took three trades. Um, how much will I trade per risk? Well, it's anything between 0.2% to 1%. I think as my account grows and grows and grows, I might reduce this to 0.1% just because I don't, I'm not greedy, but at the same time, I don't really need to be, um, what's the word? I don't need to be making, you know, 1% of 10 million, let's say, for example. Like, it's a great amount, absolutely. But at the same time, it's more about survival for me. And obviously, in terms of profit and whatnot, you know, 0.1% off a million, 10 million is more than enough. Um, how will I monitor my results using Notion, of course, which I'm using right now, track my performance. And then I have a weekly ASR, monthly ASR, and then month on month tracker. So I can actually track all my data. 
um, will I reinvest my profits? So this is optional. This is however you want to manage your money once you have profits. So for me, 30% um, of my profits will be reinvested. 50% uh, will be put to external investments, leaving me with uh, additional, I believe it's 20%, yep. And then 20% will be to pay myself uh, with withdrawal. So within here, um, between this 30 and 50%, I will definitely donate some to charities um, or, you know, one of my things that I'm planning is obviously to open up a kennel, um, just a really nice dog kennel where, you know, um, people can actually leave their dogs for free because obviously people want to live their lives and enjoy their lives. Um, obviously I need to get the money in place and so forth, but it'll be fully funded by myself. Uh, it'll be more so kind of a non-profitable organization, but yeah, so people can leave their dogs there. People who love dogs will work there, which will get a salary and so forth. And it'll be, it'll be really nice. But anyway, that's something for the future. Um, and then what is my plan in an event of a drawdown? So take a 30 minute break, no entries. It can be longer, it could be a day, it could be whatever, but sometimes you just genuinely need to take a break and get away from the charts because it can mess with your head. I've got dogs myself, so sometimes I go for a walk, um, time it in perfectly, go eat some food, you know, comfort in, um, whatever can kind of just, you know, get you back. And then just, you know, you need to get your head back in the game because you don't want to be all misty head and then miss the great trade that you've been waiting for all week just because you took a stupid bad trade. Um, so you need to be able to have those, you know, you need to be less reactive and more uh, proactive. Um, ASR, my position with a calm and collected mind. So when I'm doing these, it's better to do it when the market's not on, because when the market's not moving, we all are a lot more calm. But when the markets are open from Monday to uh, Friday evening, you know, people are usually, you know, quite all over the place at the beginning so until you've got that under control and you've got that patience and discipline that you've been working on for so long then you can actually you know kind of fluidly do your asr whenever you need to but for a lot of people it's difficult it's hard to take trades and to um to, to basically work in flow like that it's really hard to explain but there's a time where you work from abundance and there's a time where you're just working from your ass so don't work from your ass try work from abundance which basically means you know, from a very peaceful, calm, collected mindset where you're not in a rush to take trades. And I think reducing your risks definitely helps you with that. Um, it helps me because when I was taking 1%, it was, you know, it was quite a lot to be honest. But when I was taking 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, less and less, um, it hurt less basically because a loss hurts, but when it's less, it's less. Um, but a loss is a loss anyway. ASR, my position, calm, collected mind. And then make sure I take detailed notes to help me improve moving forward. Hence your ASR and so forth. So you want to make sure you're putting as much detail into your notes as possible. Um, obviously, I tend to not do it as well sometimes. But, you know, you have to try your best to put as much in as possible. Because when you do go back in and you realize that things are not working for you because the truth behold is if you were making a lot of money right now you wouldn't be watching so much content i mean you would probably still be watching a few videos every now and again but you'd be enjoying your life a lot more and you know that's the aim so i think in order for you to actually get there you need to realize that you by putting in all of your mistakes and everything you think you're doing right right now into paper you can actually come back and read it and be like okay that's where I'm making a mistake I need to improve on that and then you're going to know what you need to improve on and then you're going to keep doing it keep doing it and then you're going to become better and better and better until the point where you actually are basically you know at the point you want to be so these are some patterns that I trade um, so basically these are the continuation ones so continuation meaning that it's going its continued direction. So for example, as a short, I'd be looking for push down, bear flag, short, uh, bull flag would be push up, flag, push up. Um, and then flat flag would be more so just a flat one. So push up, flat, push up. You can see these are not the most cleanest. And I did that on purpose because you need to understand that the markets are imperfect and you're trading in perfect markets. So don't always look for perfection because if you look for imperfections, you usually tend to make more money. Imperfections are actually more perfect than imperfections at the beginning. But it makes sense why you'll look for perfection because as a trader and as a human being, you know, we just look for perfection for some reason. We're perfectionists, but learn to be someone who looks for imperfections. Systematic triangle um, can be confused with a few other pennants and so forth. But yeah, 
um, basically just kind of squeezes inwards and goes up. So push, squeeze, push. Um, expanding triangle, so basically an inverse of this. So it could be called an inverse systematic triangle. But anyway, open, expanding, just pushes up and then goes. So push down, expands, push down. Um, double flag, also known as falcon flag, is basically a flag where it just has another flag. So um, essentially, um, it's just two flags. One flag here, larger flag here. So it just develops into something larger, pushes down, creates this, and then it somehow corrects, but then uh, it just kind of develops into something much larger. And then you can basically take that. It's a really good trade as well. Um, one of my favorite um, patterns to trade. And then you've got ascending where, you know, it just basically continues in an upwards direction, but very squ squeezes um, and then descending and then rising wedge, which can also be considered as an ascending um, in the right areas, of course. And yeah, just basically there, rising wedge, and then you've got falling wedge, same thing. Head and shoulders. Um, head and shoulders can be a tricky one because we, when I started taking head and shoulders, I looked for a lot of perfection on this as well, where I was like, oh, it's not equal to the left shoulder to the right shoulder. It doesn't always need to be. It's just need to understand what's applicable. This is as clean as it's going to get. But to be honest, you can get them angled as well. You know, you, you have to back test it and really start to play around with these particular patterns to get better at it. Next one is double top and double bottoms. Um, literally, that's a double top, that's a double tri triple bottom, essentially. Mini double bottom as well in there. Um, you know, like I said, practicing is key. Um, my boy Yassine was the one who kind of just inspired me to really do a lot of it, helped me out a lot. So, you know, props to him um, for really, really hooking me up with the mindset to actually just go ahead and push for that. Um, and then... Yeah, and then you got this scoop. So this is the arc where um, you can call it like a, it's kind of like a cup and handle kind of um, sort of archway. Um, so yeah, the arc is basically this little scoop, ice cream scoops, boobies, whatever you want to call them. They just kind of scoop like that, and then you know they basically just go along the trend. So um, these are good points to kind of look for shorts, but you wouldn't know that this was confirmed until you were here. And then you could have taken a short, you probably would have been taken out somewhere there and then it would have corrected. And then you would have taken a short again once it scoops again. So it's a pattern that is worth learning, of course. And then management style. So um, going back to a diagram that I said that I had a diagram of how I manage. So I have semi-aggressive and um, a progressive more aggressive management style um, I basically made these up but so essentially um, let's just say and I'll just go through these in a second but um, these are the areas that I'll look to enter the market so you've got the top bit over here you've got the bottom over there and then you see how I'm protecting myself that's the most important part the blue line is just indicating where the entry is but um, or where the entry would have been but then you can see that the protection is always above the blue line. That's the most important thing you can see at the end. I don't take an entry there because we're so close to this low that I'm not looking to just enter the market. Depending on, um, depending on the, what's it called, the risk reward, I may incline, and there was probably an entry in here, but sometimes I think there's more than enough on the table and I don't need to be greedy and just keep jumping in. Bear in mind, this is 1% risk um, or less, and then obviously, you know, it works. So there should be at least a three to one on the table in order for me to take the position. Um, there we go. So we have higher time frame structure with a clear pattern, forecasting the impulsive leg, which is uh, basically the push, um, confirmation of the impulsive leg. So we have this and the confirmation. Um, and then more relaxed with the stop losses, leaving room to breathe. So you can see that I've left a lot of room. Um, because at the end of the day, it's not about getting it as tight as possible to get the most profit out of it. Eventually, these will all add up and I'll make a lot of profit. So it doesn't matter. As long as I'm in the market and I'm in a profit and I can protect myself, that's great. All it is management at that point. When price is creating structure patterns, um, I have to let the market breathe. So if I enter the market here, I'll leave my risk open until we've really moved aggressively away. Until we've moved around about here, where I'm running about 1%, then I can probably say, okay, I'll lock in, break even, or wait for the next structure to start forming, and then move my break even above it, and then so forth. So management will be moved with it. Um, and then if price 
uh, well, yeah, these won't really be so much applicable for you. I think everyone kind of comes down to the style of management. They want aggressive, more aggressive. I get more aggressive in these areas. So as this happened here, my stops would be above here, which would be just above inside that structure, all three of them. And then when price started moving down here, I'll move probably 50% of that. And then as this kind of gets lower and lower, I'll just be more and more aggressive with it skating maybe about 20 pips away from it so if price does come up and just tags me out it tags me out but more than enough i'd be more than happy to get out of the market anyway in that area so that's it really and then if it drops off aggressively it is what it is so that basically just summarizes my basically the whole uh, document on the trading strategy um this is very very um let's say descriptive in a sense yeah it could be more detailed but i think it just kind of covers enough of how i do trade i think you don't need to trade this way there's hundreds of strategies out there i'll be very honest with you and this did take me quite a long time to really learn and to adapt and to practice and i would say more than six seven hundred hours you know on the charts probably even more than a thousand i'll be honest with you but those were more so psychological lessons that i had to go through because the way that I was thought or the way that I think is uh, was very, very much um, problematic at the time because I was basically greedy, had a big ego. Um, I had a little bit of FOMO to deal with. Um, I was fortunate that I came back from a strategy before, but at the same time, when I thought that was a good thing, it was actually very, very negative because I came with so many bad traits I had to unlearn. So learning a whole new strategy can literally be a very, very massive journey, but it's definitely one that is very much worth it. But there's so many strategies out there that can work towards your personality. So I say before you commit to something and before you really want to start trading a particular way, you have to realize what do you want from the markets? What do you want to actually achieve? Like for me, one of the reasons why I kind of trade this way is because of the patience behind it and it requires a small amount of trades right a small amount of trades means that i can have a lot more time on my hands to do other things and you know it comes to a point in your life where if i wanted to go off to let's say miami for a week i could go off to miami for a week you know these sort of things obviously for me personally i prefer not to go to miami and just kind of you know do what I enjoy doing, which is trading, being by the charts. Um, even if I wasn't to make a profit that week, it still wouldn't matter to me because I genuinely just find the passion and love to actually enjoy something like that. Not everybody is like that. Some people just kind of want the money and they want to go get loads of stuff. By all means, that's very, very much possible. But at the end of the day, if you want to do that very quickly, you know, the, the, the people that make the money the quickest are usually scalpers. So with this particular strategy, you can use it as a base for scalping, but it's not really as profitable. You know, it's kind of more mid to long term holds. Sometimes you're in and out of the day. You know, sometimes it can be, you know, let's say this is a daily chart, which, it, you know, this could have been somewhat around about three months of trades would you be in an, in a market for three months with no income like some people can't handle that some people don't want to be involved in that so these are sort of things that you have to ask yourself and you have to realize but you know this is the way i trade um if you do want to look, kind of learn about it i can definitely point you in the right direction um more than happy to kind of jump on a call with you as well and kind of give you some free um guidance as well like you know i'm all about helping to be honest and i wouldn't charge you a penny um, I'm not that sort of person. So, you know, I think if you are serious about trading and you really want to learn and you're willing to give it as much as you can, I can definitely point you in the right direction. And at the same time, I can definitely give you some free advice um, in terms of how you can improve your trading and um, better your education towards it and then maybe change your life around. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or anything, you know, feel free to drop me a message, private message, comment. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe the video as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, have a great week.